playing a bunch of people you never heard of tonight. The Blazers are sitting out all of their players, and you probably haven't heard of the players that you're supposed to have heard of. So um, whatever. But I'm I'm like I'm in. I and I can't even pinpoint when exactly the energy got ramped up to another level. Like we're always in. We're always watching every game. That's our job. That's our love. That's our joy. A lot of you are the same way. Um, but somewhere along the line in the last few weeks, uh, this story just kind of connected with me to the point where I'm almost like I'm actively trying to reject all of the thoughts of the off season. We've done it too. I wasn't trying to right. pin any other show or any, any, any listener, or anyone, you know, we had Clay Thompson's dad on two days ago and we're trying to pick our way through hey, we're going to the off season. So like, I'm not saying it's not there. It hangs over everything. We know that. But I've reached this moment where I'm like, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I just, I don't, my my mind wants to block out all thoughts of um, Wiggins being traded. Right. Is Kaminga off the table? Will Clay stay? Is this the end of the big three? I don't know, man. Put it, put it this way. If they play next Wednesday night and they're down by 10, with three minutes to go, then the thought is going to suddenly be in my mind. Am I am I watching these three in warrior uniforms together for the last time? But until then, man, I'm I, I'm. It's like when you're watching a movie or you're reading a book that you love. I don't want to skip ahead. I'm in. I'm in. I'm into right now. Is now not gra- grabbing all of your attention? Is, uh, is anyone else having a hard time, like, keeping this story away from slipping into July? I, I, I don't know. I feel that. It feels like all roads end up leading to July. Right. And um, I'm not saying this is some sort of belief that they're going to go on a run. This is just a, 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 an acceptance and an enjoyment of what's happening right now. Yeah, and I've told you all along that I think that the play-in tournament is cockamamie and it's contrived <laughs> and all the rest of it, but I'll admit to you, and this is a an open confession, that I'm more excited about the play-in tournament than I've ever been and than I thought it would be. And it's twofold. One, the Warriors are a part of it, but the other piece of it is they're good teams in the play-in tournament. And put aside the Eastern Conference for the time being because I'm not that invested in the play-in for the East. Atlanta, oh. eight games below 500 as a 10 seed. That, to me, is a joke. And that's the joke of why I think the play-in tournament is not successful. But in the West, you've got a battle for the 7, 8, 9, and 10. Maybe a battle for the 6 and the 7. Can the Warriors be 10, 9, or 8? Absolutely. They look like they might have an inside track at the eight, the eight's not out of the question, and we'll know, we'll know more tomorrow where they sit. If they win and New Orleans beats Sacramento, all of a sudden now you're tied with Sacramento. You lose the tiebreaker, but the Kings still have Phoenix. If you win and Sacramento loses tonight, you have a good chance of getting the eight. I actually would argue that if you win tonight, you've got a good chance at the eight, period. Period. Because if the Kings don't lose, that means the Pelicans did. And you play the Pelicans tomorrow night which means that you've got a chance to beat them and draw them closer to you, and the Pelicans have to play the Lakers on Sunday. Now, the Lakers right. may need that game. They may not. I don't know if all of their uh, if all of their paper mache players are actually going to go to New Orleans and play on Sunday. I have no idea. But there are good teams that will need these games who are on the schedule for New Orleans and Sacramento. So if the Warriors win tonight, and they win tomorrow, they are going to have a fair shot at at not just the nine, but the eight. And the nine, as you know, is guaranteed if yeah. they win the rest of their games. That's a whole lot of ifs, and the Warriors will play without two of their key players tonight. Um, I do think that that's about tomorrow. I do. The Warriors know where they're at. Portland has stopped playing. Utah has stopped playing. If the Warriors want the eight or the nine, they've got one game that they've really, really, really got to focus on. It's tomorrow night. Here at Chase Center, and and so give Clay and Draymond the night off. Look, they did it for Steph last week, and what did he do? He went to L.A. and hit all of his threes, all of them. So they're trying to do the same thing. I have no doubt that Draymond and Clay are plenty healthy, but at this point in the season, with the playing tournament looming and the realization 
that the only opponent that's going to try is on the schedule tomorrow night after a road yeah. trip. They're going to get all three of their guys a day off here coming down the stretch. No doubt, and you figure you can beat Portland anyway, and no game is a gimme in the association. Portland is 21-58. and 58. They've lost 8 of 10, and they look to be a team making travel plans sooner rather than later. So you would hope that even without Clay and without Draymond, you could still go to Portland and win. And if you don't, well, then all bets are off about the 8. You can forget being the 8, and maybe the 9 is in jeopardy as well. But you feel good about going there. You've been playing great. And I think you're right. You you preserve these guys. I don't even know if they if they made the trip. That's something that we should uh, investigate. Maybe you, you left those guys behind. Uh, give them the the real rest and relaxation. The I true R and R. I would. Yeah. If I if I were them, and this was the way I was playing it, I mean, well, you would have planned it yesterday, and you would have just said, "Hey guys, you know, go ahead and skip the flight. We're going to go without you." And you know, maybe you had them fly anyway, just for to be a part of the show of, hey, maybe they all play. Yeah. But that's something we can investigate as we go. But Well, if they were true game time decisions, we wouldn't know yet. Right. Like, why right. were they announced out at, at one thirty, as opposed to when we normally get that, when Steve Kerr talks pregame and it's somewhere more in the neighborhood of 4 or 5, right. 6 o'clock before a 7 o'clock game, but we found out at one thirty. Is that because the Warriors have known for two days that they weren't playing? Maybe. I think so. Maybe. Probably after they beat L.A., you realize that, okay, we can go to Portland without them and, and probably still win, and you knew that Portland wasn't going to be playing a lot of their front-line guys. So you're getting down to the nitty-gritty, but the fact that we're even talking about the machinations of the play-in, can they be 8, can they be 9, can they be 10? I don't know if there's a if there's any chance of them getting all the way up to the 7 I don't know about the... I don't think so because too many of these teams, teams play, play each, each other. other. So, yeah. yes, someone's going to lose, but someone's going to win. Right. They would need everybody to fall apart, and there's too many games. The you Suns, need New the, Orleans to lose out and well, the Kings to lose two. Well, and that's not possible because the Kings play the Pelicans tonight. Right. Right, and the Suns play the Kings next. Gotcha. So there's too much, there's yeah. too, too, too much interconnectivity of all, all of all of these teams. But that leads to kind of the point you were just making. Like I love. Are you giving the playing tournament its flowers? I I'll say this. Yeah. This year's Western Conference will be the year that people point to in the future when people poo poo the playing tournament. Oh gosh, this playing tournament. Well, let me take you back to 2024 in the Western Conference when the 10 seed had 46 wins. And iconic Hall of Fame players. I don't even know if I'm talking about the Warriors. I might be talking about the Lakers. Right. Or I might be talking about the Suns. Like, these are very good teams with very big names. And the NBA ratings next week are going to be massive. And the other way to look at it, how would you feel right now if you didn't have the play-in tournament? Oh, my God. Why? Well, I'd feel better and more excited about these last three games. Sure, but you're also going to end up leaving out 46 and 47 win teams. Wouldn't be the first time. No, it wouldn't. And I mentioned the 2008 season with Steiny yesterday where the Warriors were 48 and 34 and they were the nine seed. And if had you had to play in then, Portland was the 10 at 41 and 41, but the Warriors were ninth at 48 and 34. And it was, well, Sorry, you missed out by two games. Yeah. Although stuff, Denver was the eight at fifty and thirty-two. It's incredible, but stuff like that usually leads to change. Like the, you know, the San Francisco Giants won a hundred and three games in nineteen ninety-three yeah. and got golf clubs. Yep. See ya. Thanks for your one hundred yeah. three and fifty-nine was their record, and that was it. And Atlanta won the West. Exit interviews. Atlanta. I mean, what the hell were they doing in the West? Thank you. Falcons and Braves at the time. That led to the wild card. Yeah, like exactly. The Giants absolutely in 1993 led to the wild card. And so, I don't know, man. And the play-in was born out of the pandemic, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't know what the... I, I mean, thought that's when they I don't know if that was the it. motivator. Right. They might have been doing it anyway, but The that's... motivator is just more money. Of course. And, and I think the realization by um, the NBA, you're looking around and you're going, okay, baseball has created this wild card thing and they've got one and done games. Football has nothing but one and done games. NCAA tournament, one and done games. You know what 
what seems to do really well, one-and-done games. Why don't we get some? Let's get some one-and-done games up in here. Let's get some urgency for some of these games because these seven-game playoff series, I mean, you see them. The playoffs will start in a week and a half, and they will go until 2029. Pretty much. Like, it is first round unbelievable is, yeah. how spread out it is. So the NBA was like, let's get some urgency going. So they did this, and I love it. I love it. Why not? I know that I know that the longer you watch sports, whenever there's change, you're like, okay, uh, this is this is man made. This is concocted. This is whatever for money. Cockamamie. Well, I'm always like, but 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 so was the thing that they made before that. So is the entire league. What is NBA basketball? It's made up entertainment for our right. enjoyment and for them to make money. What is this radio station? What are we doing here? Entertainment. Are we saving someone? We're changing the world, Mark. Are, <laughs> are we? We're, I, I'd like to think we we'll get people through their day. You know, I'd like to think that, that, that there's some fun here. Maybe there's some information. Um, you know, does it provide some sort of a service? We're certainly not saving lives. So, I don't know. I'm just not bothered by that stuff when people are like, Let's do more. That's the United States of America. When something is good, we do more. We do more. Yes, you will still be alive, Dibs, when the NFL is doing like a 20-game schedule. Right. Because why? Because more. Because they did 17, and it worked. So guess what's happening next time? 18. And then when that works, guess what's coming next? 20. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it'll be 24 by the time we die. There's all these months of the year where there are no football games. Let's have some more football games. Yeah, it's dreadful. Let's put them in every country in the world. Why? Because more. Let's do more. I'm all in favor of more when it involves quality. And this year in the play-in, it's a success because it involves quality. And I'm just looking back at previous play-ins, and I look to 2021-22. The San Antonio Spurs were the 10 seed at 34 and 48, a winning percentage of 415. At that point, I could do without your garbage, and I'm talking to you, Popovich, your craptastic team <laughs> that lost 48 times. But you don't deserve to be in a play-in. Miss me with that hot, steaming pile of garbage. But that's the way it fell that year. Like, the nickname Beast Mode came from a playoff game Marshawn Lynch performed in when his team was 7-9 and nine and they were at home. Because that was the division that year. And Seven they and shouldn't won. be able to host home playoff games. But they did. But it's and, it's, and, it's and, not a good thing. And when you're 34 and but, 48, you don't belong in no, anything. I agree. Other than the lottery. But it fell that way. And this way, it, it fell this way. Where a 46-win team is going to barely right. scrape in.